Hello and good afternoon. I welcome you to today's special webinar for JFT Brokers exclusively uh, for JFT Brokers. Uh, this is Jens that speaking and exclusively presenting this uh, event for you. Um, it's uh, one of my definite favorite topics. Uh, it's about behavioral finance and uh, the question on how to use it in your trading. Um, so unfortunately, we can't go into uh, uh, into into really depth here in the next hour um, but this has nothing to do with the fact that I don't want to present to you all the secrets about this topic but because this topic is such a such a huge and and uh, um, complex topic that it's just not possible to to talk about um, all the aspects around this topic nevertheless I want to show you some some uh, yeah, examples um, based on my personal experience, but also based on on um, long-term data, uh, data which was updated. So some of you might know that I also wrote a book um, in German, not, not English, but in, in German. And uh, it was on the topic of um, um, behavioral finance and the sentiment and trading. And um, so here you can see already the first, uh, the first slide, but um, probably... Uh, before we start through with with uh, with the content here, um, I'll give you some some further insight uh, insights because why not because but why this uh, topic is uh, such a um, 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 special one. Um, oh, by the way, that just uh, well we can right start start right here uh, since this is the exact question. I just um, I found out that this is the exact question uh, which which I want to talk about here. Um, so when you're when you're when you're um, gaining some experience in this business, when you're meeting clients, and um, before I, I uh, founded my own company, and before I uh, started to accept uh, clients' uh, funds to to manage the money um, in a professional way, um, before I, I, I founded my own company, I was um, I was uh, responsible for for building. Probably you've heard about Daily FX. That is um, the uh, uh, former research arm of a very big uh, U.S. American broker. Not allowed to do business in the U.S. anymore because of, um, yeah, in fact, cheating their clients. Um, uh, so the broker I'm talking about is obvi obviously um, FXCM. You just need to Google them. So uh, during the last months, there were several um, several um, um, news, and uh, they had to they had to shut down their U.S. business. And I built um, the the research arm for them, a very renowned research arm, which was then, by the way, bought before all this came to light. Here, what happened there behind the scenes, uh, which was bought for for forty million U.S. dollar by IG Markets, and um, I think the price itself shows um, the value of this of this product. And uh, so. Um, the thing is that um, during this time, when I built this this brand in Germany, for uh, not just Germany but also Austria and Switzerland, um, when I built this brand, I met several several people here, and um, all of them um, had some something special in common. They usually tended to uh, cut their winners short while leaving their losers run. And you just wondered why is that? It doesn't make sense since, um, I mean, you, you don't need to uh, um, um, find a good trading book on trading, but you can, uh, you can just buy an average book on trading. Um, and uh, the thing is, in every of those books, you will find the quote, let your winners run and cut your losers short. So there's no, and I've, I've read plenty of books on trading, um, there is not one where this quote is not mentioned. And if, um, for example, in the series of um, uh, Market Wizards from Jack Schwager, uh, there, there, there are interviews with, with very professional, very successful traders. All of, them, all of them tell you the same. So the question is, why do people cut their winners short, let their losers run, even though they know better? Because nearly everyone who starts trading has at least read one book where this um, quote is, is, is mentioned here. And um, so this is the exciting question. The exciting question you, you face during your career over years, every time, over and over again, um, you, you w just wonder, one day you just sit down and uh, you shut down everything, your smartphone, you switch, you switch it off, you switch off the computer and just think, why do retail traders do what they do? Why do they hold 
too long on losing position and cut winners short. Why do they do that? I mean, they know better, but they definitely keep on doing it. And um, so uh, here, behavioral finance comes into play since it perfectly explains what's happening here. And by the way, I need to recommend you something here um, while I'm talking about books um, a little here. So let's go to Amazon and um, I want to recommend to you the following book. It's called Thinking Fast and Thinking Slow. So this is from Daniel Kahneman, Thinking Fast and Slow. And uh, it is, and this is the funny thing. So, by the way, um, um, uh, I bet it's uh, it was it was translated into different languages. So you can finally find here um, 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 at the first glance, you can find the German version of it. So it's schnelles Denken, langsames Denken. In English, it's thinking fast and slow. And by the way, it's just 9.99. When I mentioned that we just can uh, grab a small piece of this topic here. In, uh, in this webinar in one hour, um, the, this book perfect, perfectly shows and explains why this book has over 500 pages, okay? So it's a, it's a really, it's a big, big book and it's probably the best book on trading out there. And now you might wonder, well, um, why is a book on, on uh, thinking or on, on behavioral economics or behavioral finance, why is this considered to be one of the best trading books ever? Since it perfectly explains why we do what we do and especially why we do it in trading. And, um, and that's why I think everyone who plans to trade um, uh, professionally or at least plans to, to trade um, in a serious way, not just gambling around a little with the money uh, you might have lying around here and just saying, okay, now I go all in. And I bet that, for example, the outcome of the French election on uh, Saturday, Sunday, sorry, Sunday will be, um, I don't know, no Macron in the second round, but it will be a duel between uh, Mélenchon and Le Pen, both of them are Eurocritics. So you could imagine that if this is the, uh, this, this is the, the constellation here, in the second round of, of voting, then uh, the second election on the 7th of May, well, you, you, you should consider the euro to be doomed and uh, chances are quite high that there will be kind of, of I don't know, Frexit referendum um, or whatever. And it's not just Le Pen who is very Eurosceptic, but it's also Mélenchon, for example. Um, even though both of them are um, somehow extreme in their political views, so the one is left-wing, politician, this is Melikon, and of the other side, it's a right-wing politician, is Le Pen, both of them Eurocritics, well, usually would consider or, or expect the Euro to fall then, if this really happens, and Macron doesn't make it to the second round here. Um, and uh, based on that, you might say, well, I take the money and then I just put it all in, I don't know, on Euro down or whatever. So I do not recommend this, Definitely not that, that you get me wrong here, but um, there, there are people out there who trade exact that way. So for them, trading is not really trading and, and finding um, spots with a positive expected value, seeing the long-term, um, um, capitalizing on, on, on long-term advantages, for example, or capitalizing on advantages they might have identified and then start to capitalize on them. And once this ex positive expected value changes and is probably turning negative, then you find another approach similar to running a business like, I don't know, um, you're selling ice cream in the summer and then when it gets cold, well, you might uh, find different ways and probably... Uh, um, selling selling uh, candles or something like that or a cake uh, um, in the uh, into the, the final year uh, the final final weeks of the year because it's Christmas so um, but the thing is if you really if you take your trading seriously then this book is for you I highly recommend it um, and then you should have read through it probably it's not just that you read it once but you will read it several times and uh, it perfectly explains why in trading, people tend to do what they do. And so what we know so far is the following. So psychology in trading plays a crucial role. This is nothing new for you. You might have listened to my um, other webinar that was on the three um, uh, columns of profitable trading where I say one of these columns is trading psychology. I'm not saying that if you, if you master this column that you capable of trading uh, um, profitably, um, but it increases the chances, let's say. So, um, and 
psychology plays a crucial role and emotions come into play. So emotions, every one of us has. And um, emotions, which based on my personal experience, range from anger, frustration, fear, self-confidence, ego, over to motivation and actionism. Um, all of them somehow play with each other. So there's a gray um, area um, where, where, where you start to, to uh, come from anger, uh, anger, I'm sorry, anger, <laughs> anger and frustration over to fear, for example, or the other way around. So there, there are several ways of, of, of getting to this point. By the way, self-confidence, ego, plays also a very crucial role here. And on top of that, I'd just like to add here, there's something I also mentioned here during uh, the other um, 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 webinar, and it's part, for example, of my educational course I'm offering. Um, I make sure that people get, if they get something out of the um, psychology model, I'm offering that they know and are capable of, of, of understanding that emotions are crucial and we are human beings. So emotions drive us. And in trading, what it's key is to make sure that you um, start to uh, profit from your positive emotions, emotions which are um, um, which, which are bringing you to, uh, to better trading here while you start to somehow get rid of those emotions who are, well, making you unprofitable and making you losing money. So, and um, based on my personal experience, all those years I'm, I'm in this business right now, and all the people I met, all those retail traders I spoke to, um, all those, all those uh, retail traders who sent me mails and everything, I can say that based on this personal experience, fear is one of the main topics, respectively emotions in trading in general. So most of the people um, who, who want to start trading, who, get start, who wants to get started in trading, most of those people, they want to change something in their life. So usually they are somehow frustrated because of their current job and they just say, well, I, I can't stand it anymore. On the other hand, they are really fearful since um, they say, well, trading is great, you can make a lot of money trading the markets, but they are somehow not really willing to, to risk anything here. And some, sometimes uh, the, um, the, 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 the outlook of financial uh, independence here is um, so strong that they start to say, well, I just want to get started in trading and probably start to trade with money they can afford to lose, for example. So, and based on that, fear plays a really, really crucial role here. Many people don't like to lose money. By the way, uh, money is just a product here, um, a byproduct when you trade. So usually, um, in my personal um, 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 world, for example, um, my personal point of view here is the following. For me, trading uh, is nothing... Um, where I plan to make huge tons of money. So trading um, or money is just a byproduct. So if I'm successful in what I'm doing, if I'm successful trading the markets, well, I'm making money and that's a byproduct I, I, I get out of this. Um, you might love now since you, you think, well, money is, should be the, the main driver. No, that's not true. So in my personal case, for example, it's the intellectual um, game. I'm, I'm playing here. So I'm, you, you're playing in one of the biggest markets. If you're trading FX, you're trading the biggest markets um, um, in, the, in the world here. And um, so my, my personal target, in fact, is to make sure that I'm better than the others. So I'm really, I'm really uh, competitive here in this moment. And so making money uh, is showing me, okay, I'm better than the others. And I win this, this intellectual challenge or I won the intellectual challenge. And uh, that's something um, I definitely recommend you to, to find a real driver, a motivation. If, if money is the only driver, my personal experience is you have lesser, the, the chances are, are lower to really make it in trading um, if, if money is the only driver. Since, um, uh, I, I just don't know how to, how to say it. I, I could for, probably have something to do with myself. So I can't imagine if money was the only driver that I'd be successful with my trading. I can't just, I can't imagine that. And that's, by the way, something um, which is really, really, um, which is really, really important to you. But even here, a fear is a very, very um, important topic. Um, if you, for example, someone who has from time to time problems with, with, uh, with its ego, um, and um, if you're someone who is not capable of accepting, accepting a no here, 
um, I can tell you trading is a very difficult task then for you and then you will have lots of, of trouble of, of, gaining, uh, of gaining momentum here in the right direction when trading the market since the market tells you more than once no, probably sometimes more than once a day. And uh, if you then have a problem with your, with your self-confidence, with your ego, um, you could really fast come to the point where you fear to, to get such a no. I mean, uh, and this then will lead you to a point where you probably start to uh, um, uh, take on winners very fast while letting losers run since, and this is by the way something which is definitely true, people um, very often they, they let their runners, uh, they, they let the they losers run because if it's a floating loss, it's not a realized loss. That means it's just a paper loss. And this is one of the one of the main reasons, by the way, this so-called loss aversion. Something we will make a topic here in the following uh, minutes. Um, this is something which leaves you um, uh, um, in, the, in the in the in the position here of letting uh, runners, uh, letting losers run here. And um, so, based on what we get to see, um, uh, what we get to see here, so-called cognitive biases. Um, which, which are defined as systematically and flawed tendencies when it comes to percipience, for example, or remembering. By the way, uh, that's something you, you might have seen in your trading. How many times did you say, well, I said it. I, I knew that this would happen. Just imagine the following. So if someone is now coming out, and it's a perfect, it's a perfect timing here, someone coming, coming out right now and asking you, how big do you think is the chance of Marine Le Pen winning the French election? Or let's say, how big do you think is the chance of Mélenchon winning the French election? How big do you think is the chance of Macron winning the French election? Write it down right now. Write it down. Do it, do it exactly um, um, the way I just, I just formulated it. So how big is the chance of Le Pen winning the French election? How big is Mélenchon, blah, blah. And then you write it down. And then you just you just put it aside and try to forget about it. So probably just do it here um, during you're doing something different um, because then you don't start to think about it a lot. And then do the same next week on Monday and try to remember how big you uh, had your chances on, let's say, Le Pen becoming the French, uh, uh, next French president here. Um, <clears throat> or do it at, after the 7th of May, probably even better because it's three weeks from now. So do it after the 7th of, 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 uh, of May then. Um, take out this, this, this piece of paper and look it up. The great thing will be, you will say, well, I knew, I, I just knew that Le Pen will become the next French president. I tell you why, because, well, we had it with the Brexit last year with Trump and everything. Um, the funny thing will be that currently, at, right now, you, the chances uh, that Le Pen will be the next French president will be lower than in the moment after Le Pen really is voted and elected here. Um, and this is something we call a, a cognitive bias. And, and this is a tendency here, for example, um, um, to remember, the, it's a so-called hindsight bias. That's something you can also see in, in trading, by the way. So if you see the market move in a certain direction, um, I bet you hurt yourself saying several times, I knew it. I knew it that the DAX would go higher from here. I just knew it. Well, the moment when you had to say in the past, do, do we go up or down from here? The chances from from you, how ch how how big do you, you consider the chances the market going up and going down would be far lower than the moment after you saw the chart and you're yeah you remember you saying well I think the market goes up, but if I ask you well do you think it's 100 percent that that the market will go up? We said ah no I don't think so probably it's 60 percent, and then if I ask you two weeks later when the market really went up. You will say, well, it's around something like 80%, 85%. Write it down. You will see. You, you will just find out yourself that this is exactly the thing here, what, what happens. Um, it's a systematically flawed tendency when it comes to thinking, respectively judging. It's all, all somehow the same. So judging, um, I'm, I'm thinking, and everything. And this is something which impacts your trading in a negative way. By the way, this, um, there are some people out there 
um, uh, arguing, for example, that this is, those cognitive biases are one of the main reasons people lose money. And in fact, somehow it is, since it's a zero-sum game. Somebody wins, somebody loses. And um, if you're on, um, um, always uh, cut your winners short while letting your losers run, well, in the end, you will lose money. And you have to, you need someone else out there who's making the money you're losing. So now the next thing, and this is something which is um, under, uh, underestimated from many. So usually you might say, I could just finish here and say, well, all those cognitive biases and uh, make sure that you, that you get this, read the book and you will see everything. But the thing is, um, and this is why, why I think this is, um, if this is not real value to you since it's only theoretical. But if you look at this chart here, you can see that this is a real problem. So what you see here is data from a third party broker, not JFD, that's something I want to mention here. And we, um, 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 we face the time frame between the 1st of March 2014 until the 31st March uh, um, of 2015. The same chart <clears throat> is a chart I had in my book, by the way. And here, the only thing which uh, was, was, was different was the time frame. But all in all, the columns look the same for all the assets covered here. So in my book, by the way, it was on FX, so I just had FX pairs here. But if you, for example, look up the uh, um, um, average winner to the average loser here for EURUSD, for example, you will find that it's nearly close to one to two here. So the average winner is one, while the average loser is on average the uh, double the size of, of the average winner. And um, what you can see here is, in, in blue, it's the average winner. In red, it's the average loser. And what you see is that it doesn't matter which asset you cover. On average, the traders who are, um, um, and the trades which were analyzed here, which is, by the way, over 8 million trades. So it's nothing small here we're talking about, but this is over 8 million trades we're covering here. You can see that, on average, the winner was by far lower than the average loser. And um, now it's a real problem and it's one of the key reasons why traders tend to lose money in the markets. Since, um, and this is something I just want to show you. And there's, by the way, you can see that three columns, for example, in trading, um, I was talking about and, and I was covering in another webinar here, in such a special webinar last week. Um, so the expected value, this is a formula from risk and money management. and we have the average winner, we multiply it with the hit rate and then we subtract the average loser and we multiply it with the loss rate. So, and um, what we also know is that EV, I'm just doing this here, so the expected value, if it's positive, your trading is profitable. So that's something we know already. So this is based on, on a, a mathematical approach, something which is important in terms of the, uh, um, in terms of risk and money management, something you, you have to know. So that is probably the most important formula um, you, uh, you, you will see in your trading or you have in your trading. And now what we do is the following, and here behavioral finance perspective trading psychology comes into play. Um, well, by the way, you just don't know that this comes into play here, but this is based on a, on a psychological phenomen, phenomenon uh, um, which, is, which is covered in, in the behavioral uh, economics, respectively, from Kahneman and Tversky. Those two just found out about this so-called loss aversion. We will talk a little later on, and this is trading psychology. So you see those uh, columns, those columns of profitable trading, they interact with each other. And... Um, <clears throat> So what we could do here based on the EURUSD, what you don't see in this chart, but what I can tell you now is that the hit rate during this time frame was around 59%. So that was 59%, while the loss rate obviously is 61%. By the way, uh, we can, we can, I'm sorry, loss rate, 51%, 61%, um, no, 41, 41%. Um, now, some might say, hey, what about the break-even trades? The break-even trades were nearly zero. So uh, it was really, it was, it was a winner or was a loser. And in fact, so I saw um, the tradings. There were so, several um, break-even trades, but, but you, can, you can easily cut them out here. And we're talking about 0.5%. You take 2.5%, put it uh, 
uh, I'm sorry, 0.25%, put it in the um, hit rate, put it on the loss rate, the other uh, 0.25, and that, that should be fine. So break-even trades do not matter here. And then what you, what you see is also here, you have an average winner of around 20 pips and an average loser of uh, 40 pips. So average winner, this is 20 pips, average loser, it's 40 pips. So the funny thing is something you might have seen already, the hit rate is above 50%. So you're um, better than a coin flip here. Based on, let's say, your, your great um, 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 feeling for the market, your great research abilities, whatever. So you're definitely better than a coin flip here. You're um, um, more often right than you're wrong. So if you put those two things here, those, um, uh, no, I'm sorry, those four, four um, numbers, if you put them in the formula, you have the average winner, which is uh, 20 pips. You multiply it by 59%. I'm sorry, <laughs> what's wrong? Um, 59, 0 0.59, you subtract 40 pips, you multiply it with 0 0.4, and at the end, you get, by the way, this is something I have to, therefore I have to use the, the calculator, but some, something around two pips should be the, the final uh, number. So First thing is 12 here, and the second one is 16. Oh, yeah, in fact, it's four, it's not two. Um, which means you're losing on average minus four pips. So now you might say, well, but what about the pip value? Just imagine the pip value here is much higher than it is here in this case. Well, I can tell you the pip value was about uh, equal size. Usually um, the pip value uh, is, is um, bigger when it comes to losing trades, when it comes to losing trades, since this has lots, a lot, lot to do with the fact that uh, the loss aversion here comes into play, since if the pip value um, um, rises, you usually say, I can't afford to lose here. So um, just imagine you uh, somehow, well, made some money somewhere. Um, you're getting it from your grandpa or whatever. You're having 250,000 uh, euros or USD. And then you say, I've read in the book that I should risk 1% of my trading capital, which is 250,000. So I'm risking 2,500 euros here on the trade. <clears throat> and uh, now imagine you're usually making 2,500 a month working in a job you don't like. And then imagine the moment when uh, you're about to lose those two and a half thousand here. You will just say, well, I can't afford to lose it. I, I just take out the stop here. It's a like, kind of shadow stop. And this will let you, uh, let, let you come to the point where you're willing to let the loser run since you start to hope that the market will turn around. You're getting emotionally involved, emotion which you, an emotion which you definitely need to avoid in your trading. But this, this is not the topic we're on to talk about right here. So um, just to make sure the pip value equals for uh, winners and losers here, that's something we will just say. But what I can tell you is usually when it comes to losers, the pip value is uh, usually higher and, and not lower. So it's, it's just a matter of time since you go broke with this approach, since you have a negative expected value. And negative expected value means your trading is obviously unprofitable. So if it's bigger than zero, it's profitable. If it's lower or a smaller than zero, well, obviously, it's it's unprofitable. And this is something where you can finally find out that the behavioral finance and and the trading psychology, that those two um, 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 uh, components here, trading psychology and risk and money management, um, they somehow interact with each other. So it's uh, not. not um, uh, it's no big surprise here since um, that was exactly what I said last week with the uh, three columns of profitable trading, how they interact with each other and that you can look at them independently. So now the thing is um, you might probably say, uh, well, you just, just don't believe me since uh, you might say, and this is, by the way, it's not the first time that I'm holding this presentation and usually I, I, I have trouble to convince people I have trouble to convince people about, about um, um, what I'm talking here. Since 
they say, well, I have no trouble of letting my winners run and letting my losers um, and, and cut my losers short, and uh, that's it. And I say, well, please show it to me in your trading journal. Oh, I don't have a trading journal. I don't need a trading journal since I don't need to. I make money trading the markets. So that's usually the first step when you say, well, I think if you really make money trading the markets so far, um, there's a high chance that you just got lucky. It's not that you're a skillful trader, but just you just got lucky. But you can't tell the people that straight in their face. So what I do then is I start to work with, with examples which are um, the same as when it comes to trading. And that's a very simple game here. It's two questions I prepared already. And um, so now what you also should do for yourself is writing down which option you choose. So um, right now we are unfortunately not so many participants right now, but what I can say is that I have a quite good sample size here based on all the presentations I made, especially in Germany. So there were rooms, plenty of people, it was 200 people I, I um, hold a presentation in front of. And um, I just asked them the same questions and I got a very good sample size. So that was just not once, but it was, oh, I don't know, 20 times, 30 times or something. And, I, and this is something which is really interesting. I got the same results always and everywhere. The only thing which differed was how much um, of the majority voted for a certain option. That was the only thing which, which, which varied here. But all in all, I all I, every time I got the same result. So the first game, they, are not, um, um, they don't interact with each other. So they're independently from each other. That's something really important here. And it's just play once, just once. Okay, so you have the first game, the option to choose between two options. Right here, you get 900 euro from me. You don't need to do anything for it. Just, just, just say, um, oh cool, 900 euros, you hand it over to me, that's it, that's the game. So this is option A. Option B says you have a 90% chance of getting 1,000 euros, but 10% chance of getting nothing at all. So the question is, which option do you choose? That's all it is. And um, so write it down for you. Just just write it down before I, I give you uh, the um, um, before before I tell you what the people did and why they did what they did um, during those uh, bigger bigger um, um, events. Um, let's let's play the second game um, right after it. So second game, it's two options again. You choose between two options. Option one is you lose right here 900 euros and have to give it to me. So the same game as in the first part, in the phase, first game, but in this case, you don't get the money, but you have to hand it over to me. And the second one is you have a 90% chance of losing 1,000 euros, but a 10% chance of losing nothing at all. So now here the question, which options do you choose? So um, one question. Oh, that's, that's awesome. That's great. So I have, I have Vitor here who uh, just answered. Um, and he says that uh, game one, he says A. Game two, he says B. Um, and also another one, that's great. Game one, A, and game two, it's B. Okay, so perfect. <laughs> It's perfect, since this is exactly the same thing I got during those uh, presentations, the same result. So in game one, you choose option A, in game two, you choose option B. And the funny thing is that this is the exact same reason why this chart shows itself as it shows. Um, so, and, and now I tell you the following. Now I tell you why this is, and this is this is the thing here. Um, this is something I always have to emphasize. It's nothing. It's nothing back, uh, bad to to choose these two options. This this is this is completely fine, um, since it's it's human to do exactly that. So in game one, you have the chance. It, it's a game of winning. The second is a game of losing. And in the game one here, uh, when it comes to winning, you just say, well. I take the 900. So probably you just did exactly the right thing here. What you did was um, you, you calculated the expected value. So in the first, um, 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 in the first example here, you can see that um, if you put the average winner here, which is 900 and the hit rate, which is 100%, when you put it here, you get 90. 
okay? Uh, and, I'm sorry, that, not 90, 900. So it's, it's 900 multiplied with 1. And here the average loser is 0 since you're not losing anything at all and the loss rate is 0. Okay, so it's 0 multiplied with 0, which is 0, meaning that the expected value for the first choice is 900. In the second game, it's 90% getting 1,000, one which is the average winner is 1,000. The hit rate is 90%, 0.9, 900. And then in the second, 10% um, 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 uh, of the cases, you're not losing anything at all. So you're having the average loser which is zero, you multiply it with 10%, which is zero, so meaning the expected value for the tech second choice is also 900. So it's not a, a question of mathematics here, but it's a question of um, what do we do if we have the chance to grab a winner right here or gamble for probably a bigger win. In this case, we're talking about 1, Euro, uh, 100 euros more. Um, probably it's not, and this is also something which is very important, you could also do this with a 1 million and 100 million here. Just uh, do the same thing, but then you, you'll get, you will see that the expected value differs enormously. But if I just hand you 1 million here, 1 million euros for doing nothing at all, it's probably a game changer. And uh, making you, bringing you in a complete different uh, life situation, leaving you vulnerable to cognitive biases here too. So this is something which you have to consider. Um, if you say you have a 50% chance of winning 100 million or I give you 1 million right here. So the expected value for having a 50% chance of making 100 million is way bigger, 50 million, than it's 1 million. But in, in this time here, the, the thing comes into play that is life-changing and that's why it's not a fair game. That is the exact reason why I choose this example since it's not game, it is not life-changing. So 1,000 euros um, doesn't make you significantly richer. Um, and and then in this case here, <clears throat> making 100 euros more or not doesn't make such a big difference. So it's a pure mental game we're playing here. And so what you're doing is you grab the winner right here while you're not willing to gamble in terms of the winner, but you just say, okay, um, I, I just take the winner. I just take the winner. It's, it's 900 euros, great. In game two, you had the same choices, but in this, this time we were talking about losers. And right here, you were capable of losing 900 euro straight, right here, or you had a chance of losing 1,000, but a 10% chance of not losing anything at all, meaning, you, you just thought, well, I mean, 100 euros more, if, if, I, if, I, uh, if I lose, it doesn't matter. But there's a 10%, that's a slight chance, a small chance that I don't lose anything at all. And that's why I choose the second option. I start to hope that I don't lose anything more. Also here, the expected value is completely the same. In this case, it's minus 900 euros, but it's the same for both choices. And this is the exact same reason why this is happening here. If you see the winner, you just grab it. Especially if the PEP value is high enough. You just grab it. You just say, well, and that's exactly what most of the people do. And so it's a complete human reaction. So it goes back to when we still lived um, on, on trees here and, and where we had to say, well, I want to, um, I want to catch this mammoth. And, hmm. But here, you look at this. Um, my family would be would have a great um, evening here if we just eat this smaller, way smaller piece of meat here, but I'm not, I, I don't have to, to fear that I will lose my life here. I just go down the tree, I, I grab this, this smaller piece of meat, I don't have to, to, to hunt the, the mammoth here, everything's fine, right? And so this is completely normal, it's completely human, but in terms of trading, you start to really have a lot of problems here based on that, since you start to, um, you start to, to, to grab um, the winner first. This is, this is very interesting here. It's, it's very interesting since uh, there's um, the, 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 um, and the, uh, um, the there's, there's the wording greed in it. It's really great. And since um, in, this, in this case here, you could say, okay, well, you want to make more, but this is exactly what trading is about. So is it greed in the moment you have, um, um, I mean, the expectability doesn't differ here. So is it, is it really greed if you, if you say um, you want to make more? 
I mean, this is usually the, the main driver, right? You want to make more, but start somehow to, to, to make sure that you don't lose much. And, then, and so um, if, if you start to think in, in terms of expected value, um, you will find out that this is the main thing, the main driver for trading. Even though here in this case, it doesn't matter if you choose one um, option A or B in the first case, because the expected value is the same. So from this perspective here, um, choosing the first option, by the way, is, is probably not the worst um, decision since on average you will, you will make 900 euros. So it doesn't matter. But the, the mental game here behind this, this is, this is really um, something which will sooner rather than later come into play when it comes to trading. And this is, by the way, something that was very interesting. So the, the, the first time I played this game was um, in front of an audience here in Munich. It was a presentation, and I played this game with the people. And after, after the game, um, one of the um, people came to me and said, well, it, it's really great, great topic, great presentation, also the game, perfect. But he said, well, what I doubt, to be honest, is that the people really get the concept behind, of the, behind this, since you, you probably have trouble to, um, um, to, to bridge here um, this, this, this example to, to trading. So... One second, please. Okay, um, and um, that was that was a very very interesting um, um, uh, note here on on this presentation. And so I did the following: I looked or I, I created a trading example here. And um, so this is this is German, um, but I, but I will 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 run you through this, even though I think it's it's somehow self-explaining. So what I do is, or what I did is, I, I created an, an upward trend here. So it's it's already started somewhere here, um, and and now we see higher highs and higher lows. And there's a very simple approach where you say, okay, I buy the break to new highs here, put my stop here, at this last relative low, and um, then I see that the market moves into my direction. So the great thing about this is um, you somehow you're, you're, you're happy about to see the position run, your, run into your direction um, as, as predicted if you want. Um, but it's not really joy, but you say, well, it's okay. I'm, I'm doing fine here. That's, by the way, something. Um, and therefore, let's, let me show you a, a, a current example here. It's somehow really interesting. So I have a position on, as you can see, in EuroGBP. So I'm short here. Um, the reason why I'm short is, is uh, something I presented in the um, 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 several morning meetings here. But what I can tell you is I'm short already for quite a while now. So it's something like, I don't know, when did I start? It's daily chart. Where did I bring this position up? I think it was here. Yeah, and then, well, obviously it, it, it moves in my direction. Um, and now I tell you the following. So currently you can see that I'm ahead something like over 5,000 euros here. And I've already been ahead um, 70 pips more. So I was short on this um, small, let's call it a flash rally in the GBP based on this short covering um, on, on Tuesday, which happened. By the way, I don't think it was the last time. I could imagine another short rally to happen here. Um, if, if another um, wave of short covering comes into play while, and this is on top of that, something I have to mention here, I somehow really hope that there will be um, the second uh, round between Melancon and Le Pen. I think this is the worst and the nightmare scenario for the market here and uh, could shoot Euro significantly down. So this is exactly what I'm betting on right now. And so, um, yeah, you can, you can understand why I want to see uh, um, uh, here Macron not making it to the second round. But a different topic. So what I want to talk about is the following. So what I can say is the trade was already ahead six grand. And I'm still, I'm still planning to hold on this position. As you can see here, I hope for a drop as low as 80. But now the thing is, I was already ahead six grand. And so far I can tell you that the market, it took some time to really um, move into my direction. Finally, it did, so I should be happy, and I am happy, so it would be ridiculous to say, no, I'm not happy that I see it making here uh, five grand and more on, on, on one trade in, in one month. There are people out there who have to work for this two months or something, so um, everything cool. It's just one position, but I can tell you the following. Right now, I see the market correcting this move, and I, I'm not even 
close to be as joyful here, or I, I'm, I'm not even as close as, as, um, uh, as no, yeah, put it the other way around. So I, I, I'm, I'm joyful. I, I really appreciate what I see here, but I can tell you, I, I see the market moving six grand in my direction, but I now see a correction of 1,000, which is uh, nothing compared to the six grand before. So I, I'm, I'm losing less than 20% in, in this current move, which is nothing, okay? But it feels frustrated. I, I feel frustrated. It's, it's frustrating, really, it is. Ridiculous. You might you might wonder now. Well, this is completely ridiculous. It's completely ridiculous, and I definitely know that my mind is playing games with me right now. So I, I try to ignore it. But the moment I look at the PNL here, I can tell you I feel frustrated since I know that I was already ahead six grand. And I can tell you the following: the moment the market moves to this level again, and probably even below that. Um, I can tell you, I appreciate it, I'm joyful, but I can tell you, um, the moment the market starts to move against me again, um, and, and I don't know, I'm ahead then eight grand or something, if, if, I, if it really works out that way, um, and I'm losing 1,000 euros again in the P&L, so it's a floating, it's a floating win here, um, I definitely feel way more frustrated than I feel joyful right now. And that's something which... So your mind is playing games with you. It's based on cognitive biases. It's this, this, this concept is called loss aversion. And this is exactly what I tried to show here in this case. That's not a down um, trend, but it's an uptrend, but it's the same principle. So you, you feel joyful. You appreciate it. It's great. The market gives you something which is, which is great. You're not doing anything for it, but just moving the stop in your direction. This is great. That's a great way of making money. But to be honest, the moment the market starts to move against you here, you start to, to feel what's called loss aversion. You don't like this at all. And the moment, and the, 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 uh, the ratio here is, by the way, one to two. You may remember this. So it's something which also comes into play in the real world. And um, so usually you have to make twice as much to have the same positive feeling for a winner than you have um, uh, um, um, to lose. So meaning, you, for, for covering a loss of 1,000 euros um, from a mental side, you have to make 2,000 euros. So this is the, the normal, uh, the normal um, 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 ratio here. And this is exactly what's happening here. So usually then you start to, to say, well, okay, I, can't stay, I, I just can't take the pain of losing, um, the, the, um, of losing here some of my gains um, anymore. So what I do is I just take out the position. And that's when you usually, in this case here, have a small winner while you, and this is hopefully that's, that you accept, respect the stop here, um, that you then come to a, to a point where you lose on average more when you lose, even where hopefully it's not a shadow stop, as already mentioned. That's something um, which is then, in the long run, making you a lot of trouble. Then, because even though you, have, you might have a hit rate of way above 50%, you can't make up um, all those, those big losses here with those small winners. And at the end, you will lose money. So this is usually what's, what's, ex what, what's happening here. And this is exactly what's happening here in this case of this game. So in terms when you're winning, um, so usually take the winner Probably you, you don't even make it to this point here that you, that you start to see such a corrective move, but you probably say, oh, great, the breakout, boom, and then you take out the winner here uh, and you say, well, at the end, I made, I don't know, let's say 1,000 euros on this trade, great. Um, but the thing is, if the trend really starts to move your direction and start to move higher and higher and higher and higher, just imagine how many thousand euros you could have made here by just staying in this trend since you do not have a signal here from a market technique perspective let's say okay so if it's your trading approach and you're profitable with that everything's fine um, this is something different if you have an advantage trading pro um, 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 strategy you're fine it's, it's great you're making money so no worries about small winners but if you're if you're making money in the long term everything's cool but this is exactly the thing you have to know that you're making money and if you do not know it, then this is exactly the second thing next thing which people usually do not have an advantage traders, trading strategy, they just do not know if they have an advantage or not. And so they're based, they, 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 
I'm, I'm, I'm this, they, they in deciding on, on, on things um, which they have no real control over. They decide based on cognitive biases, which are somehow um, systematically um, um, uh, um, 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 mistakes they make from a mental side here. And um, so the second thing is, in terms of the winner, you can do the, play the exact game with the loser here. Um, if it's not real, it's not real. Meaning, if you're if you're losing, uh, um, if if you, if you lose money, but you you haven't realized the loss so far, great, since it's not a real loss, right? And you just take out the stop and you say, well, I hope that the market will some some time in the future turn around. You're probably fine as long as the market is trading above this relative high. Uh, I'm sorry, relative low here. You might you might be fine since then the the upward structure is still in, in in play. But the moment we fall below this level, the trend is broken, and you definitely have to go out of the position. Since then, the market turns from long in this case to short. Probably they, it starts to turn to 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 neutral, but most of the time it turns to short. Then, and this is exactly what you have to remember. And this feeling of hope is this what's happening here in option B in the second game you have a chance of 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 10% just 10% of losing nothing at all well you grab it you take it you take the chance of not losing uh, anything at all and that's when you take out the stop and when that's when you when you just say okay um i, I probably it hurts and there will be a point when it hurts that much that you just take out the position and say okay well i'm i'm done here i'm mentally completely um, I'm uh, ruined right now. I'm completely down, and so I have to take out the position. I can't sleep anymore. It just, it just makes me sick to my stomach. What's happening here? But, well, this is exactly the second game you're playing. So, and, and you don't. Ha what you have to avoid is come to this, this, this moment of thinking. If you're there, um, you you start. This is called on the Jerks Dotson model, the strange psychology again. Um, that's something. Um, um, where you where you start to um, yeah where you start trading based on your unconscious competence and if you do not know what trading is about you do not have this level of unconscious competence you start to scream at your screen or I don't know and uh, and you completely lose control here and that's most of the time the point where you start to lose your account so. This is something where, based on a on a um, um, practical um, example, not just here in this in this example, but also in the example I just presented to you. And I'm not I'm not telling stories here. I'm not telling stories. So this is frustrating to see 100 euros going away. You know, when last time we looked at this at this at this uh, PNL here, I was I had 5,030 grand. Okay, now we're down 100 euros, and it's no time. It's five minutes later. To me, 100 euros shouldn't matter since 100 euros compared to 5,000 is nothing. And also based on the position size. So I'm, I'm short 150,000 here, Euro GBP. So, well, what do I expect? But the thing is, it's frustrating. It's just frustrating. And if you do not know what you're doing and what you're aiming for, you have lots of trouble, especially since if you're in the market um, and you have no clear plan of what you do, you, you have lots of trouble since you're involved in the markets. It's like being under fire um, um, in the war. I mean, this is a very martial um, um, and, and, and brutal example here, but um, read the books from, from uh, Jack Schwager here and the interviews with Marty Schwartz. It's a former, um, former Marine and also trader, one of the most successful traders of all time. And he compared trading to being in war. And this is exactly what, what his metaphor is here. Just imagine you're under fire uh, do you really think you can you can think clearly here? If you have no clear way of thinking clearly, you will make mistakes. You have to have a clear plan you're working through, and um, you have to to make sure that the games your mind your brain is playing with you that you can somehow overcome it. And that's something which you have to train. It's nothing you 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 just have because based on being a human, um, you're definitely uh, in a position where you lose to your brain here because the the brain, your brain, is talking games with you. So <clears throat> here, here are those four cases. Th those four cases are um, four cases I, I uh, used from the um, from the book I presented um, at the beginning of this webinar. It's um, 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 what did I say? Thinking fast, thinking slow, and um, 
I just adapted it a little to, to trading. So the following, as, as um, written here, is based on Kahneman's best-selling book, Thinking Fast, Thinking Slow, which I highly recommend, which I already did. And uh, it says the high probability sure bet and small probability risky bet uh, cases here, case of winning, case of losing, um, meaning here you have a 90, 95% chance of winning um, 10,000 euros. Um, do you go for um, a break of a crucial level to get another 10,000. That's, by the way, the exact same thing as um, I, I presented to you here in game one, okay? Do you go for this second chance? I mean, you might say, well, 10,000 is a lot of money, but if this is exactly the amount you're, start, you're willing to, to, to risk here per trade, well, um, the thing is, you, with, with winning another 10,000, you're making, you're turning your risk reward to one to two. Okay, the payoff ratio is one to two here, or two to one in this case, um, meaning the average winner is twice as much as the average loser. If you have a hit rate of 50% and uh, you're working with a payoff ratio of one to one um, and you're risking, let's say, 2% or 1%, 2% of your money, you're 100% um, sure to go broke here. So this is also a spec and approach um, you have to consider when it comes to trading, when it comes to risk and money management. And so... Um, the thing here is, it's not necessarily something about greed, but it's something about, um, does it make sense from a mathematical standpoint in terms of my trading? It doesn't make sense. And uh, if, it's, if, it's, uh, if I'm not willing to go for a break here, but if I, if I make my, my, my winners smaller um, uh, because of loss aversion, for example, of, of fearing, okay, what happens, but if I, if I now have to give away those 10 grand here, um, you will definitely face some, some trouble in the long term. And that's what trading is about. It's not about the short term gratification, but it's about the long term gratification. And this is something um, where we then come to a point where we talk about, start to talk about expected value here. And also the same thing here, the high uh, probability, sure bet in case of losing, 5% chance of losing 10 grand, you feel a loss even though it's unlikely. Um, and that's that's resulting here in fast profit taking. And this, especially if trading too big or um, like ga playing game A, uh, uh, game one here, and and um, taking taking option A. So this is exactly the same thing. The, the same thing. That's why this this game is such a great example of of bringing you um, closer to this to this concept of behavioral finance, behavioral economics, and why it's such a crucial topic in training in general. Um, so now. And that's the thing, like here, the 5% the chance of winning 10 grand, similar to playing lotto or bingo, um, you go for it, right? And that's exactly what I do too, and what every, at least man does. Um, probably some, 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 some women do this, women do this, do this too, but usually men are doing exactly this. So since uh, men will always be little kids if you want. <clears throat> And they just play those games for, for uh, somehow hoping that there's a chance that they make the big money with it. Um, so in the morning, for example, there was a video a friend of mine um, sent me. It was a guy in a casino, completely drunk, and he bet $100,000 um, on one number in roulette. You know that uh, in this case, that roulette... Uh, place 35 to 1 here. So in case this number comes, he's making 3.5 million. He just put 100,000 <clears> at this one field, and he made he made 3.5 million with the the um, ball just um, flying around here and and hitting exactly the right field. So that's that's just the way it is, and I think it's fine. Sometimes you can go for those small gambles here. Mm. Since if the payoff <clears throat> is is um, is good enough, I think there's there's no reason why not to do it. What you need to avoid is <clears throat> one second, please. Playing this game too often, um, since then it starts to cost you some real money. But sometimes it it just makes sense to go for such bets. And here, game two, option B, ninety five percent chance of losing ten grand. You keep the bet on, let losers run, since there is hope that things might somehow turn around. Well, try to avoid this one. Try just to avoid this one here, and you'll be fine already. Okay, and um, if you if you then start to 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 come to a point 
we can handle those three options here well and make big winners, make small winners, somehow make small losers, but avoid the big losses resulting out of this option, game, game two, option B, well, you will be fine already, as already mentioned. This is definitely something you should look um, in your trading for. And um, so now the, the final question, how do I profit with this knowledge um, in my trading? And um, here there are several concepts you can, uh, you, can, uh, you can bring up here. For example, you have a winning streak um, and normally you gain self-confidence and you feel somehow invulnerable. Um, so what you need to do is you, you need to try to induce rational thinking here find actively reasons why the next trade could fail. It's so-called a so-called pre-mortem analysis. And um, uh, if you do this accurately, um, you will never trade without a stop anymore, plus you won't fear losers anymore, because you know already before setting up the trade that it could go wrong and that you could lose money. And uh, the second thing is, if you grasp the concept of expected value and you understand that trading based on cognitive biases will result in bad results in the long term, uh, and increasing your chances of going, bro uh, going broke, then um, the solution might be that you formulate a trading plan, a clear idea what you plan to trade, then that you test it, and if it works, and it's a robust approach here, um, that having a positive expected value and a risk of ruin of zero, that you just go with it. Um, and the, f the final thing is, what you what you should take with with you here from these um, um, from from the last 60 minutes is stop fighting writing your trading um, um, stop fighting writing your trading strategy down respectively um, stop fighting writing your trades down so this is usually what I already mentioned with not having a trading journal so most people usually do this to avoid to get a result showing that they are doing something wrong it's kind of self-defense so that's one of the main reasons why they do not write down their trades why they do not have a trading journal it's because they just want to avoid that they have clear signs written down that they are doing something wrong in their trading. And um, instead of this, make it, make it something positive, making mistakes. And this is something, this is um, 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 a belief you have to, um, you have to, to, to uh, um, um, install in your, in your mind if you want, in your brain. Uh, you have to, to really brand you to think this way. Uh, making mistakes and knowing them gives you a chance to change something and get a positive result in the long run. It might sound ridiculous, but this is exactly the thing. This is something you really have to strongly believe in. If you do it, I bet you will come out ahead in your trading. You will have a great chance of, of, of um, becoming profitable in your, in your trading. And um, yeah, so that's it from my end. So the 60 minutes are over. I'm already two, three minutes um, over time. But um, I, I just hope you enjoyed the, uh, the webinar. And um, I'd really appreciate it if you, if you uh, join in next week too. Next week will be a little more practical here. So next week we'll look at the uh, US market open, the Dow Jones and the S&P. Um, this is usually something I, I do in the English version of the uh, morning meeting too, respectively, in the so-called DAX long or short. That was something which took place already at 7.20 p.m. I'm sorry, 7.20 a.m. GMT and where we had a look at the DAX. Unfortunately, there was no chance of formulating trading setup, but look at the chart. So um, probably it wasn't the worst decision here not to, to go with a trade today. Where is it? Here. Um, so the, the, the DAX itself, it's, it's really unfavorable right now. Probably also the main reason for this is uh, thanks to the French election. Let's see, Monday will be a great day, I hope, since uh, that will be the day after the French election and there we have a second DAX long or short then at 9.20 a.m. Uh, German time, 7.20 a.m. GMT and um, yeah, I just look forward to it. Um, just, um, yeah, just um, I'm tune in <clears throat> and now have a nice evening and uh, wishing you all the best, uh, all the best from, from Berlin, Germany and to talk to you then tomorrow with the morning meeting again. I look forward to it. Have a nice evening. See you and bye-bye.